So you've got a Zipedi, a Zidu, or a Plex server, and you've been ripping 4K Blu-rays to your heart's content. But now your hard drive is running out of space, and it's time to go with network attached storage, but you don't know where to begin. Now that was me about three weeks ago, but I found a solution that isn't too difficult to set up, and it doesn't break the bank. So we're gonna cover the different types of NAS configurations, we're gonna talk about adding drives, backing up your data, and setting up a UPS battery backup as well. Let's do this. Real quick, we're gonna do a little bit of background on what I have now and what I would like to do. So currently I have two 16 terabyte Iron Wolf drives that I was using with my Zipedi, which was down here in the studio, and it was kind of just dispersing the movies throughout the house. Now what I wanna do is I want to add storage, but I still wanna use my 16 terabyte drives. And I filled up one of them. This monstrosity here was the reason why. This is the Game of Thrones 4K discs, all eight seasons. So in the process of ripping all of those eight seasons of Game of Thrones, I was running out of space quickly. So I've got a little bit over 16 terabytes, like about 18. So we're using a little bit of the 16 terabyte drive and one full one is all used up. So I wanna use those two drives and I want to add more storage. So let's start off with what is a NOS? Basically, it's a little computer with a bunch of hard drive bays. The NOS sits on your network and it can be accessed by all your computers and other devices in your home. You can store pictures, movies, music, along with all kinds of other computer files. You can also create users and give them specific permissions depending on how much you want them to access. So all the hard drives in your little mini computer kind of come together to make what's called a RAID or a redundant array of individual disks. And there are different types of RAID levels, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6. RAID 5 is what a lot of people use because it has built-in redundancy to keep data loss at a minimum. So basically what happens is if one of the hard drives fails, you remove it, you replace it, and then it takes a little bit of time and it will rebuild the drive. Now that sounds cool and all, but there are some disadvantages. The first one is you need to have three drives to start off. So a minimum of three drives. And number two, you have to have all of those drives at once. So you have to buy all of it up at once. So it's good. the initial cost is a little high. So I was able to find a great sale on 20 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro drives, and you would have to buy three of those they're around $340, $350. So you're looking at just a little over $1,000 for the three drives. Now they're 20 terabytes each, but using a RAID 5 configuration, the redundancy means you lose one of those drives. So you're paying for 60 terabytes, but you're only getting 40 terabytes of space. So let's run some numbers. Now I couldn't find many three or four bay NAS devices, but I did find a reasonably priced five bay NAS which I did end up buying. I purchased the Synology DS1522 Plus, which has five hard drive bays. That was $699. So if I went with the RAID 5, I would have to have all the hard drives to set it up initially. So if I wanted to use my two existing 16 terabyte drives, I would have to buy three 16 terabyte drives at 250 each. So we are coming in around 1450, but we do have the issue of getting 18 terabytes of movies and TVs off of the 16 terabyte drives and then onto the new ones. Meaning I'd have to find a way to move 18 terabytes worth of data off the drives, then configure the RAID and then move it all back. Again, I did see the 20 terabyte drives for 350. And if I were wanting to go all, you know, 20 terabyte drives, Plus the NOS, we're looking at an initial investment of around $2,500. And that is a little bit steep. I don't wanna pay that much right now just to get it started. You know what I mean? So let's go on to my recommended configuration, which is called JBOD. Now, one of our patrons named Paul, what's up, Paul? He runs a configuration called JBOD. And to me, it makes a little bit more sense for what I wanna do and it, probably makes sense for you as well. So JBOD stands for just a bunch of disks. And since you only need one drive to get JBOD started, well, one drive and a NOS, we're now looking at about $1,000 to get set up. So what I did was I bought two 20 terabyte drives on sale along with the NAS device. So that came in around 1399 ish. And what that's gonna allow me to do is I'm gonna make the JBOD array and then I'm gonna copy all the information from my two 16 terabyte drives to this JBOD array, which has like 40 terabytes of storage, a little less. 
And then I'm going to add the 16 terabyte drives into my five bay NAS. So that'll give me roughly around 70 terabytes of storage. And later on when that's running low or I find a sale on a 30 terabyte drive or whatever the case is down the line, I can just pick up that one drive, toss it into the NAS and then just boom, add it to the whole JBot array. I think it's really cool. Now, one of the things that it doesn't have is redundancy. So that means if any of the drives fail, all the data is lost. So that means we need to have some sort of backup procedure. And I'm going to talk about that later on in the video. First, let's go on the computer and set this bad boy up. Installing the drives into the NAS is pretty straightforward. Unlock the drive tray and pull the tray out of the NAS. Remove the plastic tabs on either side of the tray. Insert the drive and replace the side tabs. You will hear a click when each tab is in place. Slide the drive tray into the NAS and lock it into place and use the little key to lock the tray into the NAS. Do that for how many drives you have. And remember, your NAS has its own operating system, which means each drive you put into the NAS will be formatted and all data will be lost. Connecting the NAS is very simple. There are only three plugs. First, we wanna connect the power, then connect the network cable, and I'm connecting the UPS backup to the USB on the rear of the NAS. There is another USB on the front of the NAS, which is what I use to move data onto the NAS after we build the JBOD storage pool. All right, here we are on the computer and we will be using a web browser to access the NAS. And once we enter the URL given by Synology, we are greeted with an install screen and it will update to the newest version of Synology's desktop. And when we click start, we create a device name. I called my NAS, get off my NAS. Enter an admin name of Technodad. And if you're looking for a good password generator, check out passwordgenerator.net. It's what I use and make sure to take a screenshot of your new password. Moving on, select the recommended update option. Create a Synology account. Next is to set up Quick Connect to be able to access your NAS from outside your home. I also skipped around the clock monitoring and DSM configuration backup. However, if you wanted to have this automatically save all your NAS settings, then click the bottom one for DSM configuration backup. We end up here in the Synology desktop where we need to create a storage pool and a volume. Click create now. And this kind of explains what's going on. Now we just click start. And here's where we select our RAID type. And we are gonna select JBOD from the drop-down menu here. As you can see, we only need one drive to start our JBOD NAS. Click next. I placed two 20 terabyte drives, as you can see, and it's seeing them as 18.2 terabytes. Select both drives and click next. We get a message saying the drives are not on the recommended list, but we are not concerned about that. Keep going. As for the drive check, you'll wanna do this. So select it and click next. On this screen, we want to select max to allocate the maximum amount of storage to this pool. Click next. For the formatting, use the recommended formatting of BTRFS. Click next. Here we are confirming your settings and click apply. When you do that, you get a dialog box saying all the data on the drives will be erased. Click okay. Once the pool is created, we end up at this screen. From here, if we click on file station, we get an alert saying there's no shared folder and to create one. So we're gonna click okay. Enter the folder name, I'm gonna call it media. Click next. It's gonna ask about encryption. I am not gonna do any encryption because this is just for our home. As far as checksum is concerned, you probably want to do this as it will protect your data better. It will make things run a tad bit slower, but better protect the data than not. Click next, double check your settings. Click next again. Now set up permissions for users. Technodad and admin will have read and write. Guess we'll only have read. Another note for users and permissions. Since I'll be using a Zipidi and a Zidu, I will make a user named player with uh, an associated password so that any of these players, the Zidu, Zipidi, will have to log in as that player user and it will only have read only permissions. Okay, so now we've set up the JBOD and we've set up a shared folder. So now what we need to do is copy everything from the 16 terabyte drives over to the NAS. Now to do this, I simply used the USB 3.0 port on the front of the NAS connected to a drive dock. 
Now a drive dock, what you see here is you, you put in a bare drive and it accesses whatever's on that drive. So let's jump back onto the Synology desktop file station. When you open the file station, you will see the shared media folder. And underneath it, you see USB share one. So all we need to do now is copy from the USB share one to the media folder. If you are curious about copy times, it looks like 600 gigabytes will transfer in about an hour. So that means 1.2 terabytes will transfer in about two hours. Since I have 18 terabytes to transfer, this is gonna take about a day and a half to complete. So what I wanna do now before I delete all the information on the 16 terabyte drives and add it to my JBOD array is I want to back up all the data. So the best way for me to do that is to just have like another drive that I purchased. So I picked up a renewed 20 terabyte drive for about $250. Now these renewed drives, I wouldn't use as a main drive, but for backup, I'm literally going to take this 18 terabytes, put it onto this 20 terabyte drive, and then just put that 20 terabyte drive on the shelf over here. And that is my backup. It's not plugged in, it's not gonna be used. The data in there is safe and airtight. Now, depending on how many movies I buy and rip and add to the NAS, I will probably back up maybe once in three months, maybe once in four months. It all depends on how much new information and new data I'm putting on the NAS. Now, interestingly enough, while I was running the backup, meaning copying everything that's on the NAS to this renewed drive on the drive dock, which is going to be my you know cold storage, there was a blip in the power, meaning the power went out for not even a second maybe just a fraction of a second, everything just came back on. And I was just like, uh oh, because I know Paul told me that I should invest in a UPS battery backup because the NAS, if it's doing anything and the power goes out, it's gonna kind of mess things up. And it was doing the backup when that power blipped off. So I ran down here, checked it out and it seemed okay. And then 10 minutes later I checked on it. Yeah, it was just kind of hung up and I had to like, power cycle the whole thing, basically restart that backup again, because I don't know if any data would have gotten lost or damaged or anything like that. So I would highly recommend getting a UPS backup. I'll put a link down in the description. The one I got was around $200, but I actually got it on sale. Now I'm going to show you how to set it up because the UPC does come with a cable to connect it to the NAS. I'm going to set it up to where when the power goes out, and the NAS gets notified, the NAS will shut everything down in five minutes. And then, you know, the battery, the UPS can either just run its course until the battery dies and the NAS is already off. Or what happened over the past like week is that the power just comes back on after a few minutes and then everything's good as gold. So here we are on the Synology desktop. We want to select control panel, then select hardware and power. And at the top here, we want to select UPS. We are going to click the box to enable UPS support. And on this dropdown, keep USB UPS selected. You can customize the time by seconds, minutes, or hours. I set it up to turn off after five minutes. It states that all services are stopped and volumes are unmounted to prevent data loss. Synology NAS will be powered off safely before the UPS device runs out of power. Click apply and that's it, that one's done. And now your NOS is protected from power outages, spikes, and dips. So highly recommend getting yourself a UPS backup. And you know, I'm here out in the mountains and we have all kinds of crazy wind and storms and stuff like that. So for us, it is a must. In fact, I'm also thinking about getting a UPS just for my internet. So that thing doesn't go out when, you know, this whole thing gets uh, tripped up. So we've created a JBot array with the two 20 terabyte drives. We've moved all the information from the 16 terabyte drives to the JBot array. Then we've backed up the JBot array, and then we set up the UPS for the power issues that we have, okay? Now it's time to add those 16 terabyte drives to the JBot array. So I powered off the NAS and I put one of my 16 terabyte drives in and powered it back up. On the Synology desktop, go to the app section and click on storage manager. Click on HDD slash SDD. You will see drive three is detected, but it is not initialized. Click on manage available drives and select add drive 
for storage expansion. Then select the storage pool to add the drive and click next. Select the available drive to add to storage pool one and then click next. Click continue on the message saying the drive is not of the preferred list, sure, whatever. And here you wanna click the box to expand the capacity of volume one to about 50.9 terabytes and click next. Look over the settings and click apply. So now you'll see drive three says normal like the other two drives. And you'll also notice that my 16 terabyte drives have a capacity of for data of about 14.6 terabytes. As you can see, adding drives to the JBot array is actually pretty painless and pretty easy. So you can buy one drive, buy a NAS, round a thousand bucks, you know, take your 10 terabyte, 12 terabyte, whatever you have, copy everything to the JBot array, which only consists of one drive, one 20 terabyte drive, take your old drive and just put it on a shelf. Let that be your backup. And when there's a sale on drives or you have some extra money and, or you're running out of space, then pick up another 20 terabyte drive, toss it in there, add it to your volume and keep continue ripping and moving files from your computer over to your NAS. Now, when it comes time to add all of these movies back to your Zidu or your Zipidi, it's very simple. All you have to do is point them to the NAS, which in this case is called Get Off My NAS, and you'll find it under the SMB or the Samba protocol if you need to look for it that way. And since I created the username player, I log into that user on these devices and they scan the drives just as they had before. All of the movies populate as they did when the hard drives were either directly connected or inside the player. For me, this was a pretty painless setup and configuration. Yes, it will take some time because, you know, 18 terabytes moving this, backing this up. There are a lot of moving parts, but just take it one step at a time. Again, this took about a full three weeks to get up and running once everything arrived. Again, if you wanted to go on the cheap, it'll cost you around $1,200 to get one 20 terabyte drive on sale, the NAS, this particular five bay NAS, and a UPS battery backup. And once you have that, like compared to a RAID 5, you know, you're gonna be spending a lot more money because you gotta buy five new hard drives, then the NAS, then the UPC, and that initial cost kind of will, you know, it will, it was deterring me. So I would imagine it would deter, you know, most of you as well. So for around 1200 bucks, you can get started with this JBOD configuration and follow my steps. It's not that difficult at all. And in this three weeks time, I actually picked up another 20 terabyte drive. So now I've got my whole NAS filled with three 20 terabyte drives and my two original 16 terabyte drives. And I do have that 20 terabyte renewed drive over there. I'm looking at right now on the shelf as my cold storage. And remember, this is not just for sharing music, movies and pictures across your family members and all of their devices, but it's also for backing up important stuff and you know, I make a lot of YouTube videos, so I have a lot of Final Cut Pro projects. I have a lot of raw footage. I have everything I use to create the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit, spatialcd.com. Shameless plug, I know. Don't forget to buy yours today. And all of my Dolby Atmos music mixes, everything's backed up to the NAS. And it's pretty awesome because it frees up a whole lot of space on my working drives with my Mac laptop. That's all for today. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.